Today we have a hand for PokerNews.com from Lexo Poker, who plays a ton of poker, makes lots and lots of video blogs on YouTube. Make sure you check him out. And he's been commenting recently about how his eyes have been hurting so bad from editing so many videos. Eyes have been hurting so bad from editing so many videos. All right, let's see how this hand plays out. Still riding the high from that last hand. The button opens it up to $60. I'm in the strata with 6-7 offsuit versus a button open against a player who plays fairly ABC straight up poker. I decide to make the call. We go heads up to a deuce 4-5 two club board. I flop an open ender and two over cards to the board. A pretty great flop for me. I check over to him and he checks this one back. I would definitely be looking to check raise this flop with the no showdown value 7-6 because you win whenever you make a straight, but also you'll be able to bluff some portion of the time whenever a club comes. And if you get a seven or a six, sometimes you're good too. So I'd be looking to apply a lot of aggression. I would, however, not lead. Whenever you're playing very deep stacked against players who play generally well, you really don't want to lead all that often. And this is a board where your opponent's going to call with any ace high because they have a gut shot. So this is not a good spot to lead at least from a GTO point of view. So we're going to check and head on to the turn. Queen of diamonds on the turn. We do miss our straight draw. I check over to him and now he bets out $100. With the action back over on me, I... Slow down, slow down, Lexo. Lexo likes to go fast. I may bet the turn, but I think in general checking is very good. This is a turn that your opponent should bet pretty frequently on because a lot of their checkbacks on the flop are going to be ace, queen, king, queen, queen, jack type hands. But also a lot of... Ace highs that decide to bet the turn now to try to get you off of a five or a four or a two. And then also just total junk that decided to check back the flop and then now take a bluff at it. So this is a spot where I definitely think check raising is going to be the ideal play. I could call this $100 bet. I could make a very tight fold mm -hmm. or I could raise. Now, I kind of like the third option of putting in a raise. Now, when he raises preflop and then doesn't see bet on four, five, deuce, two clubs. We can assume he probably doesn't have over pairs like aces or kings. He probably doesn't have two pairs, sets, or straights. We can assume he most likely would be betting those hands on the flop. So when he checks back the flop and then now bets this queen on the turn, he's representing one pair of hands at best, and he can even sometimes have some bluffs. He could have hands like ace-king, ace-jack, king jack all hands that he's trying to represent when this queen card comes out so instead of taking the passive route and calling here i decided to put on the pressure and bump it up I one thing worth noting here is that lexo just went through his opponent's range it's important to realize that lexo's range contains all the two pairs and straights and sets and whatnot because he's going to check all them on the flop and i think this is a turn you want to check very frequently as well because i think it heavily favors the opponent so lexo's range contains many nut hands. And when your opponent's range does not contain all that many nut hands, but yours does, this is an excellent spot to apply pressure with your best hands, but also with some draws, both high equity draws like straight flush draws, and then some lower equity draws like gut shot straight draws or open-ended straight draws with no showdown value. I semi-bluff raised here to $325. The reason that I like taking this line of raising is that he's going to fold out all of his ace high, king high bluffing hands, and I do think he's going to call one time with his queen x hands, but depending on the river, I do think we can put a lot of pressure on those single pair queen x hands. Like I said before, he didn't bet the flop. I'm pretty sure this player would be betting strong hands on this particular board. So if the river card comes out anything but a queen, a king, an ace, or a jack, I'm probably going to bet very big trying to put pressure on all of his one pair hands. He does end up making the call for $325, which really doesn't surprise me. Now I'm pretty sure he has a one pair queen X holding. We're looking for some help on the river. Do you think we can get help on the river? I don't know. I don't think the opponent's hand is necessarily as strong as exactly a queen. And if you do think your opponent has exactly a queen when they call your check raise, then you have to be pretty cautious bluffing on most rivers because most people don't go around folding top pair. That said, some players will even fold top pair on even innocuous rivers because they think that in order for you to pile in a lot of money, you must have a very good hand that beats top pair. But if you think your opponent is exactly top pair, you got to be really, really cautious bluffing. Even if the river is a okay card for you to bluff on, like let's say the nine of clubs or the nine of diamonds, because 
even then, most competent players realize that half the draws or more than half the draws missed. Therefore, you have to find some hero calls. And bink, we get it. It's the seven of clubs. We make a straight. I think to myself, wow, it is hmm. nice to run good. I check race semi bluff and now got there on the river. Interesting spot now, though, because the front door flush gets there. It's possible he could have not bet the flop with the flush draw and then now bet the turn with the flush draw, but definitely not going to be checking a hand as strong as a straight. But instead of sizing up, I'm going to size down here to $575. He very quickly makes the call, so I roll over my 6-7 for a straight, and then I realize I just made a very, very big mistake. I'm not going to lie. I made a really big mistake. <laughs> Oh, Lexo Poker, thank you for sharing this hand with us. Oh, it's important to be able to read the board. It's important to remember your cards. I realize that whenever you're highly distracted, it is easy to make mistakes. I know when I used to stream a lot back in the day, every once in a while you just time out or get the hands mixed up in your head. You think you have one hand on one table and one hand on the other table, even though you're looking directly at the cards. It's crazy how it works. I can only imagine video bloggers probably make little errors like this all the time. Unfortunately for Lexo, this one ended up costing him a decent amount of money. Tough luck. Hope you got some uh, good, ad, good ad revenue off of this video. Maybe you'll break even. That's gonna be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out Lexo Poker. He needs some ad revenue after this one. I, I feel for you. It's a tough game out there. Good luck in your games. Have fun and make sure you double check your cards.